Thank you very much. Um, great honour to be here. Uh, lovely to meet you all. Um, I'm going to talk today about the Homeless Law Cup and about how we can overcome um, some of the challenges uh, in the world. Um, but, uh, hopefully in a very positive way. Um, but first I always have to start on the uh, negative side. Um, so in the world today, there are hundreds of thousands of people in every country in the world who are homeless, who are living on the streets. Um, it's impossible to count the figures, but uh, the United Nations say the figure is one million. Um, I tend to use the figure 100 million, but whatever, it's far too many people. It's not sustainable uh, for the world, for the planet, not only for the people who are living in that situation, uh, but for all of us, because uh, the world is crying out in pain as a result of this. Um, I have uh, travelled many uh, cities around the world, uh, met children living in sewers, people living in the streets of, of the cities, uh, people uh, young and old, some very old. Uh, every city in the United States of America, the richest country in the world, by the way, there are thousands of homeless people uh, living in the, in the streets. And it seems that we've created a system where uh, we're incapable of, of, of solving the problem. And worse, it seems that we're becoming immune to the fact that they're there. So on a recent visit to San Francisco, uh, uh, with, uh, I met some of my friends who live there, and I was talking to them about the homeless people. Um, and they're nice people, by the way, my friends. They said, oh, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of cool. We, we, we do recognize them. I said, what do you mean they're, they're kind of cool? It, it's, they shouldn't be there in the first place. So it seems that what has happened is we've been born into a world where we just accept there are people there because they're just there. And worse, um, they start to become invisible. So in a recent survey that was done over a month, people walking along the street, um, when asked afterwards, after the month, what the people had seen in the street, they talked about, oh, they'd seen McDonald's and they'd seen a fur coat in a shop and they'd seen a Porsche, etc. Only 10% of them saw the homeless person that was sitting in the doorway every day. So they become invisible, we have this huge problem, and they say it's not, not sustainable. So uh, what to do about it? Um, because um, I'm kind of naive enough, and some people call me pretty naive, that um, I think we can create a world where there's no homelessness. It shouldn't exist at all. I mean, we are genius people. We can uh, create internets, we can film this uh, uh, set of talks today and bring them all around the world. And people become millionaires uh, uh, um, or, you know, by playing on the, on the internet. And we're really genius people. We can go to the moon or whatever, but we can't seem to solve our homelessness. Um, and I think we are quite capable of doing it if we so wish. And yet we continue to see this as an intractable problem. Every time I do a talk, by the way, I ask, and I will ask you, anybody think homelessness is a good idea? So, no. Any talk I've done, to primary school children, to richest people in the world, nobody thinks it's a good idea. Yet we get it. So what I think we need to do is to have a look at the way the, the world is, uh, the way we construct it. It seems to be the system, and so nobody wants it, but everyone's in the system, and we can't seem to change the system. Um, I remember in 1982, I think it was, Bill Clinton got elected to become president of the United States of America by saying, it's the economy, stupid. That was his big, big, um, PR campaign, it's the economy stupid, which didn't really work, it got elected. Well, guess what? 2016 is still the same thing, it's the economy stupid. It's that that we have to, it's that that we have to fix and challenge ourselves to fix it. And people are trying to do it. So on this, on this next slide here, I just want to show you some things that are made happy. So all over the world, and this is the good news, people are trying to do things. They're going to, to, to uh, set up different Themes and schemes like microfinance, where it started, for example, started in Bangladesh, and then people have seen how it works and then mimicking it or partnering with it and using all the rooms, making a difference to people. Other ones like concepts like fair trade, and most people in the room will know about fair trade since it started, it exploded, people trying to do things. People creating new um, uh, enterprises in new ways, social enterprises, people becoming social entrepreneurs. All over the world, people are saying the systems aren't right, but I will try and do something. Now, 
Some of these are work quite well. Some of them don't really work particularly well. Some of them only create a 1% difference. But it doesn't matter, because everybody's talking to one another about how these things can be improved. And I believe, actually, if we all start doing more of this together, collectively and individually, then this is how we will change the world. So what I want to do is tell you the little story about the, the Homeless World Cup, which is, which is what I do. And basically, remember the slide I showed you at, at the beginning, um, with the people lying on the street, that's the kind of stereotypical picture that anyone will show you about homeless people anywhere. And I want to tell you about how we transform them from there to there. These are all homeless guys uh, taking part in the Homeless World Cup uh, 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 earlier, this, earlier this year. So what the Homeless World Cup is, is very, very simple. We use football. We take a football to where homeless people are in the street, and we say to them, would you like to play football? And the beauty of football, and the reason we use it is because it's very, very simple. Everybody gets it. And you can be very good at it or terrible at it, but you can still play. And you can play anywhere. Um, and you can involve as many people as you like. You can play two aside or 20 aside. We could have a game here right now, believe it or not, in here. It would be very strange, but you would have really good fun. <laughs> and we pick, pick the ball around. So what we do is we take the ball to the people in the street and we say, hey, do, 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 you to, do you want to play? Most people kind of say, yeah. And we take them to a place nearby and we pick the ball around and then say, we say, hey, would you like to come back tomorrow? And in the process of that, we're creating a space where homeless people kind of feel a bit safe and also connected with other people. And then, then we start to build teams with them. You know, become part of a team. And then they do maybe say, well, we're going to play a game next week against another shelter down the road, another area of town. And then we build this up. Now, critically, what's happening here is people, homeless guys, are starting to feel a bit more self-respect and self-esteem. Because when you become homeless, you lose that completely. Your confidence goes. You don't believe in anything. Even if things are put in front of you, you don't believe you can do it. So it doesn't happen. Um, but with playing football, it's really easy. And so people start to gain a bit of self-respect. And then in the process, our partners or organizations around the world um, start to talk to them about what the challenges are in their life. Obviously, they might be about housing, it might be about employment, it might be about consumption alcohol, it might be about family, or whatever it is, to try and help them solve that problem and get them back into society. Because we've created a world where there's have and have nots. The gap between the two is, is really large. And to get from one to the other is really, really difficult. So we, we, we try really, really hard uh, working with them to change. So now we are in. 74 uh, countries around the world. Um, we are a small organization based in, based in Edinburgh, a little tiny international headquarters. We have one partner in each country, and in each of these countries, they're working with homeless people. Each of the, the definition of homelessness is slightly different in each, in each country, but it's still, they're excluded. Can't get, can't get out of the, the, the situation that, that, that they're in. Um, and then, uh, once a year, we have uh, an annual event. So what happens is the players uh, uh, during the, the, the year have a team to try and get on the team. So we have this event every single year. And uh, we've, we've moved it all around the world since we started. We started in 2003. And simply what happens is the players get to represent their, their country um, and they're selected. And the selection processes are uh, a, a little different in each country. Some of it's a, 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 a the winners of the cities play against each other and get to represent the countries. Others are different forms of selection. Um, each, each time, though, it's about the people who are responding best to the initiatives that in front of them, rather than just selling the best for you. So the teams come, they represent the country, they come to one, one, one country, as you can see from this slide, we've, we've been all around the world every year. And what we do is we play in, in, in city, city centres always, because that's where homeless people go. We play small-sided football, so the game is eight players on a team, four on, four off. It's seven minutes each way, very, very fast games. If you do it well, you have to be, to be very fit. Um, but it doesn't matter. The teams that come are very different standards. Some of them are very, very good, and some of them are not very good. Um, but it doesn't matter. The competition lasts one week. Um, and each, each team plays about three games every day. We always play in, 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 in the city centre. And then at the end of the competition, you have obviously the winners, um, but we build play competitions in so that everybody's finding their own, finding their own level. 
This year, we played the Commonwealth Cup in Glasgow. We, we uh, had 40 uh, men's teams, 40 men's countries, and 60 women's countries. Um, and everybody got the medal. It's like the mass marathons. It's competitive but inclusive. Everybody got the medal. And some winners got different cups. There were six cups in the men's competition in two months. So everybody participates. But the, the critical thing for us is the change. So I always say to people, you should come and watch the Women's World Cup where we are next year. It's in Oslo. You should come along because you'll be inspired. It's, it's amazing what happens. People, people are changing. But the critical thing for us is about impact. We wouldn't do these events unless there was change taking place. And the, 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 the fantastic news from our point of view is the statistics we get from, the, from these events is that 80% um, of the players change their lives forever, completely. Come off drugs, get into houses, get jobs, go to, go, go to college. And we work with 100,000 this year around the world, 100,000 people getting on, getting on the uh, uh, the, the team to represent their, represent their countries. And that's what drives us, and that's what's creating uh, our uh, um, passion uh, for, for what we're doing. So this is the, this is the type of uh, uh, pictures we have. We have hundreds of pictures every year of, of, of uh, remember I showed you earlier, of a player that's, that's changed. So when we started this, we, we uh, way back in, in, in 2003, we, we, we didn't know if it was going to be successful or, or, or not. But there were the three changes that took place there that are consistent throughout. Okay? And then this is really, the, as far as I'm concerned, the key to how you create change. First of all, as I said, the players changed out of all recognition. So um, and the, 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 they were just fantastic in the way they were representing their country. So they, they, they play in the national costumes. Um, they sing the national anthems with, with great pride. Um, much but their behavior and ambassadorial behavior is much better than any professional footballers that ever come across. They're yeah, just fantastic. It, it, it matters to them. And they're just fabulous uh, representatives of the human race. I often say, come to the Homeless come and see how the United Nations should actually be run. Um, they're just uh, 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 absolutely fantastic. Um, and the stories that we have in them, the anecdotal stories, are, are, are profound. So that um, uh, you know, I always tell this story, but it, it, it's something that many of the media want to talk about. You know, did they become professional footballers afterwards? And one or two of them have, and that's the story that I kind of just the dream nine story. So they're there. But much more likely to happen is um, I got on a bus in Edinburgh uh, some years ago, and um, the bus driver said hello to me. And I, I, I didn't know who he was. I said, Who are you? And he said, No, no, you don't remember. I used to be a homeless, and I got on the team, and then I. Then you know, um, uh, we were successful and I got a medal. And afterwards, I got uh, I went into a scheme to get an HDB license and I got a job as a bus driver. I have a flat that I'm living at and I'm engaged to be married. Um, and that's the story. He's moved from the dark world to the light world just by using the football. It's very very simple. And who knows? He may be a bus driver for the rest of his life, or he may own the bus company. He doesn't matter. He's like he's joining our our. <coughs> And that's the, 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 our, our story is absolutely full of that impact. So the player's impact is critical. The second impact is the people who, who, who came to watch. Thousands of people came to watch. And you can be sure that their view of homeless, homelessness, the stereotypical view, has actually changed forever. So they're cheering. They're allowing their children to get autographs signed by the players. Um, this is, you don't normally let your children near the homeless people in the street because you think they're dangerous, but in point of fact, they're just people. And the circumstances have, have changed. And all we did was just uh, take homeless people, if you like, from the street there, put some new uh, clothes on them, create a little uh, uh, arena in the middle of the city, and now people are, instead of walking across the road or ignoring them completely, they're now cheering. And that's all that happens. That's how you can create change. And then the third big change we had was in the media. The world's media came, and normally the media uh, present stories about homeless people in a negative way, and then whatever, they're upsetting the tourists and they're spreading disease and they're affecting the economy. Any problem that happens will be the homeless people's fault. But now the media presented 100% coverage in a positive way, and they come from all over the world every year to tell the story about the people. So we're simply using football as a way of, 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 of creating change. And you know, just before I finish, the other thing to say is that lots of unintended consequences happen. So we have lots of volunteers. People come every year from around the world to, 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 to help. Um, we have a whole posse of international referees that take the holidays to come. And as a result of that, 
uh, one pathway out is we've discovered that there's actually not enough uh, referees in the world. Um, and so we're actually training our players up to be referees and they're getting paid and they're getting jobs now and being referees. So any way that you're finding it. So if you could imagine, if you think about it, God said to you, right, how, how, how can a referee uh, impact homelessness? I haven't told you the story in advance. I don't know. And they're, they're just referees. They just come and referee the game and look what's happened. And many of our homeless guys have now gone back and run projects, running projects around us, inspiring other homeless people to change. In Mexico alone this year, we had 29,000 of our uh, uh, homeless people on our projects. Um, many of the, the coaches that are coaching them now were former homeless people who've gone through the street. So it's building up on itself, we're building a momentum. So this is what happens. These are these are the, the, the scenes that you get at our at our if you visit our website. You see hundreds of people like this, the, the complete change that goes on, uh, adoration and connection. And if I just leave you with this uh, slide here, because this is from one of our events in Melbourne. So this is thousands of people coming out to cheer homeless people. This is a final uh, between Afghanistan and Russia, which Afghanistan won, and the place went absolutely crazy. So sport inspired to have this final match. Um, and it's just great, not only will we change that, but we're telling, a bit, telling a different story. So we're using our imagination, our creativity to create change. So my, my final point here to, to all of you really is about this new ism. Um, the world's not a good place and it's not a good place for lots of people. But actually if we all do something, a little something, then you can create the change. You can create the change and if we start to work together, eventually some very smart person will come along and tell us what this new ism is all about, that we're actually doing. We don't know what it is at the moment, but I'm absolutely convinced there's positivity going on. We need to inspire one another, work together, and all we've done is taken this football, changed the lives of people, told the story, got other people to join in, and that's the way we'll change the world. And we'll get to a world uh, where there's no homelessness. One day we'll get there, and then we won't need to do a homeless World Cup, because in some ways it's ridiculous that we even have to do it. Thank you very much.